Well, good morning, church family. I invite you to stand with me as we sing praises to the Most High. You came and broke them down. You broke them down. And there were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name. right now I broke a string this is a uh, I'm on a hot streak right now <laughs> Dave can I steal the acoustic for today Absolutely. thank you so much Dave <laughs> actually uh, Andrew He's over there. He's over there. Andrew is gonna run for an acoustic so um, you know what I'm gonna read a song we're gonna spend some time in the word this morning because that is just a great way to uh, Am I muted on here? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Psalm 118, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Amen. Amen. Even through guitar strings breaking, you know, practice morning was hectic. You know, we love to have like really slick Sunday morning services. You know, you watch online, you're like, oh man, look at those elevation worship people or those other mega church people. And it's like so flawless. But like, this is real life, <laughs> you know. Um, but God is like good in that. Um, this week I... Uh, I ended up going to the hospital, and I was uh, getting uh, checked for uh, an injury I had. And I was just in the moment, I was like, man, I am like so powerless here in this moment. I did not want to go to the hospital at all, not even a little bit. But I was like, man, I really need to go to the hospital. But even in those moments when I'm weak and I recognize my own weakness, God is still good. Or earlier this week, um, I don't know, maybe many of you felt this. It seems like, at least at my school, a lot of people were feeling this. But just like absolutely like drained and like I was like man I do not have like physical energy to be able to like complete all the things I need to do this week um, but even in that God is good let all Israel repeat his faithful love endures forever let Aaron descendants the priests repeat his faithful love endures forever let all who fear the Lord repeat his faithful love endures forever in my distress I pray to the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yet the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. And so with that, uh, the song we're singing, or started singing, I should say, is your love awakens me. And uh, you know, I find that very fitting. And so God calls out of darkness into light um, and makes us come alive in him despite our circumstances. So let's try that off the top one more time. <laughs> Greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens. 
Good morning. How was everyone doing this morning? Oh, I got my exercise this morning already. That was great. Uh, why don't you, while you're standing, why don't you just turn around, find someone maybe new this morning, just greet them, say hello and welcome this morning. And if you're at home, we want to welcome you as well. Thank you so much for joining us online this morning. We're glad that you can be a part of this with us. It is so great for us to be together. We absolutely love these times that we can gather together in worship and in praise and as a church family. And so we thank you for being a part of this. If you are new this morning, if you're kind of checking things out at Calvary, we hope you're able to check in and um, uh, see our welcome team at the welcome desk. But we have a gift for you just to thank you for being here. And we are just uh, so glad that you could be here worshiping with us. This morning, we are excited as for the first time in two years, we get to actually call the kids up on stage and we're going to pray for them. As they are a part of the worship with us this morning, they're always a part of the church, even when they're in their class, but we are so glad uh, that they can be here, and so we're praying for them as they head out to their class this morning. Um, our anniversary banquet is coming up on March 26th, and you can get your tickets in the lobby back there. And so we hope that you can be a part of that. You can register online, or you can register here as well, and uh, we would love for you to join us and to be a part of that. Also coming up next Sunday night, the Young Adults, we are having another Young Adults night at 7.30 in the Hub in the youth room back there, so you can uh, join us for that. Uh, for anyone ages 18 to 30-ish, we always say. Uh, so if you're in and around that age, or you feel like it, you can come on out and join us. It's going to be a great time as we have a time of worship and just time of um, getting into God's Word together. Also, uh, we have our camping trip that's new for us this year. As we have, uh, we know there's a number of campers. Uh, our family's going out to Port Burwell on August 19th to 21st, and we just want to welcome anyone who wants to go out and just be a part of that. No planned schedule, but just a time you can go and just book a site, be there with us. We'll have some fun. And so if you're a camper, you can do uh, join us for that August 19th to 21st. The reservations open on March 19th, and that's this coming Saturday. So if you want to be a part of that and you want to get a good site, you can do that. We'll be around site 125. So but you can contact me and uh, let me know, and I'll, or talk to me, and I'll let you know some more details about that. We hope that you can be a part of that. There's a lot going on. There's a lot coming up for the summer. You'll hear more about that in the next coming weeks as our summer camps are ramping up as we're getting ready to, to go for those. We are very excited to have VBS in person here, youth camp, as well as a golf camp. Again, that we're bringing back. We're trying to figure out a location for that, but we know it's going to be a great time uh, bringing all of our camps back again this summer. So why don't we pray? I'm just going to pray over us, and we're going to have the band continue to lead us in worship. So let's pray together. God, thank you so much for who you are. God, we praise you for all that you do and all that you've done. God, we thank you for taking care of us and protecting us through uh, this time in these last couple of years. And God, as we see uh, things coming back in, Lord, the way that they were, as we look forward to, in a couple weeks, God, being able to just see each other's faces more, uh, Lord, Lord, we look forward to that, but we just know, again, and we give you praise that you have been in control through all of this, and you will continue to be. And so, God, we give you praise. We pray for those in Ukraine. We pray for those, God, who are struggling there. And uh, we just pray for that whole situation, God, that you would um, bless them, um, encourage them, Lord, help somehow during this time for people to come and hear about you and to see you for the first time. And God, as we are here, we just want to gather and worship. And so God, I pray that you prepare our hearts to worship you this morning, that our time here is a response to you and who you are and all that you've done. And may you be glorified this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.
teach me sound and learn a sound sung by flaming tongues above praise the mountain fixed upon it mount of thy redeeming Well, listen, it's my pleasure this morning to welcome back our kids up front. So kids, come on up. Come on up, because you got a class to go to. And come on up, kids. And so that was pretty poor. So adults, I want you on your feet. I want you uh, celebrating our kids. Come on, get on your feet, get on your feet. Let's go, let's celebrate our kids. Right on. Come on up, kids. Right on. Very nice. Come on up, come on up. Great to see you guys. And we know that we have lots of families that have gone south for March break. And so come on in, sit down right here. Sit right here. It's so great. Usually uh, in our service, we take this time to um, take our offering, our tithes and offerings, as part of worship, uh, our worship to the Lord. And so just a reminder, the, the offering will be at the back. But this week, we sent out a constant contact and we as a leadership um, really want to support and encourage uh, just the hands and feet of Jesus that are over in the Ukraine, on the borders of Poland and some of the countries where refugees are being taken. And so this morning, um, if you got that constant contact, uh, you can give at the back there um, to, towards this and uh, you can e-transfer, check out your constant contact, you can e-transfer, but again, you can give cash and stuff over and above what we normally give for our tithes and offerings. But we wanna do that as a church. Are you okay with that? And we're, we're using an organization called Mission Eurasia, who is connected with us. Connected with us. They've partnered with us uh, for a few things, even during their, during their yearly banquet here at the church. And so we've connected with them. And so um, we know that they're on the ground already. They have connected and partnered with Samaritan's Purse. And so they've been on the ground already doing some things. And so we're going to just help with food and clothing and shelter. And so I just thought that would be very generous for us to do. And so our leadership wanted to do that. And so that's what we're going to do. So, hey, you guys, how many are you in school? How many are in school? 
Did you know it's March break? Like you don't have school for an entire week. It's awesome. Now here's my question. Are your parents still at home this week? Yeah? You don't have to be by yourself? All right. What's that? Two weeks? I love that. One week? Awesome. 100 weeks. I even like that. That is the best at home. 1,093 weeks. 1,093. What years? Right on. Exactly. Well, listen, let's pray for our kids because you guys have a class to go to, right? So we're going to get you guys and you can go and we're going to continue in worship. All right. So let's, let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much for our kids. Thank you for our grandkids, our great-grandkids. And Father, I pray as the leaders take these kids out, God, I pray that you would just speak to them by your Holy Spirit. God, that they would know that you, Jesus, want to be their forever friend. And so God, thank you so much that we can pray for our kids, we can celebrate our kids, and God, that we can actually worship the God of the universe, and yet be in two totally different places. And so God, I pray that as your Holy Spirit works in us as adults and also as kids, draw us to yourself. And I ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks you guys. We'll see you later. You can follow your leaders out this door right over here. So nice to see the kids again. Uh, today, I've worn it for I've worn it for two years. It's a part of me. <laughs> today we are again praying for that third of the world that does not have access to the gospel. One of the least reached peoples are the 14 million way, spelled H-U-I of China. Pray along with our way brother in the video. My name is Ibrahim and I'm Mahui. I was born as a Muslim, but today I'm a follower of Jesus. Please join me in praying for my people, the Hui. Our most gracious, merciful God, we thank you that throughout the hundreds of years of Chinese history, you have given us an indomitable spirit that despite all hardship, turmoil, and discrimination, we remain as a people. Thank you that in the promise of your word, you will gather all people to your throne and before the land, and that the Hui will be gathered there one day before you as well. So we kneel before you, our one true Lord, because my people are in desperate need of you. We confess our sins because we know you only in part, but we don't truly know you. Through lies passed down through the generations and through the schemes of sinful men, many of us have been deceived. So in our frustration and anger, we turn to other things like money and drugs to fulfill our hearts, yet our lives are broken. We pray that you might unveil the eyes of my people so that we might see you clearly, that you are not just a God who is interested in endless rituals and laws, but a God who looks and the heart. You are not just the creator of the world, but you are our heavenly Father who loves us with all your heart. And that no amount of prayer, devotion, and ritual can give us hope beyond the grave, except in our Lord Jesus, who became for us the greatest sacrificial lamb and paid for our lives with his own precious life. We thank you for sending ambassadors of truth among us in years past, who brought the gospel to our people. Now we ask you to make that seed grow in our hearts. Please remove the lies fed to us that to be Hui is to be Muslim. Please remove our self-righteousness that we alone are the clean people. Free us from the bondage of false religion so that we can be in the right relationship with you. 
we beg you to help the Hui believers to stand firm despite all the persecution, discrimination, and misunderstandings. Let us feel your presence in our lonely nights of struggles. Give each one of us the burden to take the gospel back to our families and communities. Help us to have the courage to be both Hui and follower of Jesus Christ. That by turning to Christ, we are not turning our backs to our culture or our families, but that we are becoming exactly who you have created us to be. We also plead with you that you might send more workers to the Hui, especially the hand believers. Give them spiritual eyes to see the desperate needs of the Hui and that you will help them to bridge the gap between our cultures. We pray that you will remove the dividing wall of hostility between us and other people groups, especially the hand. Help us to have unity and reconciliation through Jesus. We pray that you will make the Hui ambassadors of this good news so that we can share it with others and help us to persevere in this journey until that day when we see you face to face. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Amen. So let's just take a few moments to pray for the way. We pray for millions of way to have access to the good news and turn to the one true God. We pray for courage and wisdom to follow Jesus while still being way. And we pray for the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to the way, communities throughout China. In this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Wow, thanks, Paul. Really appreciate that. And uh, I love our church. Don't you love our church? It's just so good. I mean, if you're, if you're new here, this is just who we are. Uh, this, this happens. Peter, don't worry about it. You can't control breaking strings on your guitar. Unless you're really pounding on it, brother, okay? But it's all, it's all good. Um, my name is Craig Danielson, the lead pastor here. And if you have a Bible, would you please open it to the book of Romans, uh, Romans chapter 6. We've been going through the book of Romans, and hopefully you've actually spent some time in the book of Romans reading through with us, um, but uh, it has just been an incredible journey, and we're going to be done with part of chapter 6 today. We've been working through uh, verses 11 to 14, and we're actually going to be done with 11 to 14 today, but uh, first things first, uh, we want to continue celebrating. Uh, if you remember last uh, two Saturdays ago, we s had a celebration of life here for Dr. George Campion. And it was just an amazing time of worship, but amazing time of just hearing uh, George and Esther's story of uh, being full-time missionaries uh, to people in Egbe, Nigeria, and uh, starting a hospital there, and seeing the pictures of when it was a hut to when it became a building, and now uh, just the hugeness of what God is doing in Egbe. And so during that service, we as a church received um, from some of the council in Egbe, Nigeria, who had flown here to celebrate George's life, a plaque, because you may not know this, some of you do, but we were the sending church for George and Esther way back when. And so it's just a privilege to be able to um, just know that as a church, that we had a part to play as we prayed and as we um, gave financially to uh, George and Esther. But uh, I want to pass this plaque on this morning to our good news team because it was those a part of the mission team years ago that really kind of spawned this whole thing of sending George and Esther over to Egby, Nigeria. So I'm going to ask Roger Braun, who's our uh, chair of our good news team, to come on up here. And uh, the really incredible thing is that we had Dr. James here. We had Chief Moses here. We had that Nigerian passion, you know, here during the celebration of life, which was so good. But it just, this, this plaque says this, appreciation the leadership and the entire community of Egbe, Kogi State, Nigeria, profoundly appreciate Calvary Church, Ontario, Canada, in supporting the late doctor, and I love this, chief. Late doctor, chief, 
Campion, George Campion, and um, just with the work that he did. And so, Roger, on behalf of the leadership of Calvary, this is yours. Wanted to pass it on to the Good News team. You guys can display this. I think we need to be proud of this and what God has done over the years and will continue to do, and uh, just honoring George and Esther. And, and so continue to pray for Esther. She's missing her spouse greatly, and just continue to pray for Esther. But uh, Roger, this is yours, and um, yeah, congratulations on this. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. So that is just fantastic. And so I want to pause right now, and I'm going to have Margaret come up. And uh, if you have your Bibles open, chapter 6, verses 11 to 14, and Margaret's going to read it for us this morning. See, so yeah, Romans 6. 11 to 14. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Right on. Thanks, Margaret. Appreciate that. So just so you know, uh, Margaret Oberend has been, um, she stepped in a year ago because Kaylee Heiss thought it would be good to have another kid. <laughs> and so Margaret's been filling in for this past year, and Margaret just has a couple weeks left, and then Kaylee Heiss is going to come back as our office administrator. And so, yeah, it's going to be great to have you back. And Margaret, thanks so much for serving our church in this way. And let's just thank Margaret. We got many more celebrations to come with Margaret, but it's all good. But yeah, thank you for reading that. So last week, uh, at the end of our service, uh, we were all challenged to steward our lives right in the places that God has placed us in this world, and that we are not supposed to use the things that, that God has given us, that he's given us to steward as kind of any unrighteous or wicked acts in our life. Because the point was this, we don't want to, as Christ followers, work against what God is doing in this world. And so the challenge for us was this, are we working against God or are we partnering with God and helping him right this world? That's the challenge for us as not only human beings, but as Christ followers. But as Christ followers, we have this amazing opportunity to bring about, and this is where God wants us, through the power of his Holy Spirit, to bring this good rule and reign of Jesus in our homes, in our workplaces, in our schools, and even in our churches. That's what God wants us to do. And we do that, and the, and the word that we stopped with last week was God doesn't want us to float. He doesn't want us to float. As Christ followers, there's no room for floating in this life that Jesus has given us. And so that was the challenge for you and I last week. Don't float in your life as a Christ follower. And if we're not going to float, and here's the question, if we're not going to float, what else are we going to do practically to bring about this good rule and reign? That's the question that we have to ask as followers of Christ. And so if you have your Bibles open, we're going to start with verse, verse 13. And if you want to catch up, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can check those things out. But here's what Paul says, and we're going to carry this on to practically live out how we know things with our head, with the knowledge that God has given us, our heart, where we're considering who we are as Christ followers, but now we're moving on to practically living this out with our hands and with our feet. And so here's what Paul says. He says this in verse 13. 
Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves, your mind, your tongue, your hands, your feet, your pocketbook, your marriage, your job, your school, your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids. That's Craig's interpretation. Now let's go on. To God, as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for what? For righteousness, meaning very simply this. Don't do the one thing that we want to do as we are sinful human beings, but at the same time, the same action that we have in our lives, here's what Paul is asking us to do. Don't do that thing, but do the opposite. Do the other thing. And it's just not, and here's the thing, it's just not a once and for all decision. It's not a decisive action. It's actually more than that. It's an ongoing, continual decision to battle against sin and basically say this, we're saying no to sin. That's what Paul is saying here, say no to sin. And we do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. We do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're gonna say yes to what God wants for us. Been reading a book called Providence by John Piper. And we are in a, um, I'm taking one of my mentees through it to be challenged, both of us being challenged. But John talks about the holiness of life. And I just love how John Piper writes. But he's talking about holiness and the sin that so easily entraps us. But he knows that sin is a battle for all of us. No matter who we are, sin is a battle. And he says this, you work, you exert effort in killing your sin. See, we think God is just gonna take our sin away. And yes, he did that through his son Jesus on the cross and his resurrection. Our sin, we're no longer enslaved to that. Sin has no dominion over it. But what he is saying is this, we have to take responsibility. So he says this, you work, you exert effort in killing your sin, because God is working in you. And then he goes on to say this, which means this, my working, our working, is God's working in me. So as we work, it's actually God, we're, isn't that God's amazing grace? It's absolutely amazing. And then it's aligning our lives and our stewardship to what God has called us to. But the question is, for me and for you as Christ's followers and those who are investigating who God is, what has he called us to? That's the question. What has he called us to? And here's what he has called us to. God has right ends that he has called us to. He's trying to right this world. And he wants us to actually rule and reign with him on this planet. And he's bringing about these good ends. And I often think about my own marriage when it comes to right ends. See, it's aligning the ends to what God has called me, Craig Danielson, to do alongside my beautiful, blood-bought wife. What am I supposed to be doing in that relationship to bring her along and join Jesus in wanting to see her just flourish in her position as a mom, as a wife, as a grandmother? How do I do that? It's not by saying, hey, woman. I mean, that's your first mistake, right, guys? <laughs> Where's my food? How's my laundry coming? Like, please take the kids here, there, and everywhere. That's not what he's talking about here. It's coming alongside her and saying things like, hey, listen, Laura, God has entrusted us with our home. Those who come into this house, he's entrusted us, entrusted us with still adult kids who want to come over. He's entrusted us with grandkids. 
And it's how do we not just, how do I not just move Laura along in her relationship with Christ, but how do we as a couple now move our grandkids and hopefully great grandkids, but how do we move our home into the direction of kind of helping God right this world? That's what Paul is talking about. It's bringing them along. It's aligning our household, your household, to basically say this, God, what do you want us to do? God, what are you about through our home, through our marriage, through the relationships that we have? And as we continue to deal with sin in our own lives, we need to be righted. We need to be righted, and only God can do that through his Holy Spirit. And Paul says this, this is why God has called you to himself, to help him right this world. And that's why I think this section not only talks about what we know about God and how we kind of own it with our heart and consider and calculate, we use that word calculating about what God is doing in our life, but now this section right here is about our hands. It's about how we are practically living our lives as Christ's followers are out. Over the past three years, we as a family collectively have had have been involved in three home renovation projects in the last three years. And sadly enough, it hasn't been on my home. It's always that phone call, right? Dad, we need you for a weekend. Dad, we need you for for a few days. But we have had all these home renovations. And there are times when I have thought to myself, Craig, you are so inept with doing renovations. I am so opposite of Mike Holmes. I'm so opposite of Tim Shields. I'm so opposite of Phil Jansen. Those guys have it made in the shade when it comes to renovations. But man, I am so inept. And here are some of the things that I have learned while I've been doing house renovations. Don't touch live wires. Don't touch live wires. And I'm serious about that. I don't know what's dead or alive when it comes to electricity. I leave that to the professionals. I have learned when I'm operating a grinder, don't leave the grinder on and lay it on your arm. That's just the way it is. You don't do those type of things. Keep drills away from Craig Danielson. Just just don't let him have one. But I've learned all these incredible, amazing realities But here's the thing, and my wife often, Laura, she just shakes her head all the time. Why do you keep doing this over and over and over again? And and here's my point, and here's the point I think Paul is trying to make, is that we wouldn't have these things unless we were out there trying. But at least we are trying, right? At least we are trying. See, the Christian life The Christian life is not meant to sit around in Bible studies, even though that's great. Patting each other on the back and saying, oh man, I learned this incredible point tonight. Yes, there's a time and place for that, and those things are good. It's not making statements like, oh man, that Bible verse just gripped my heart today. That's great for you. And there's a a time and place for that. But we need to understand, it's taking, it's taking, get this, it's taking those incredible truths that we know, filtering up down to our heart, where Jesus grips our thought, he grips our heart, and then we actually move in a direction of practically living that out. That's what needs to happen. That's why I have all these cuts and bruises on my body from house renovations, is because I'm learning along the way. And we are trying. You are trying to live the best you can for Jesus. And that's a great thing. And let me just remind us you and I do fail. We do fail, we do make messes. But again, this is where God's grace, the songs that we're singing, this is where God's grace comes in. This power, this force, and God's great love for us, it steps in 
It steps into our life because this, God knows, again, that we're trying. We're trying to do life. And I love this idea, and please catch this. As you and I turn from one thing, this is what happens. And this is not reactive theology. Some of you may have heard that before. It becomes proactive theology. Proactive theology. And I'm gonna just explain that in just a second. But I believe, here's what I believe. I believe too much of our time following Jesus is spent in reactive or corrective theology when we sin. We're always trying to catch up. And the question really becomes, man, Craig, what do I do after I sin? What do I do? We're always asking that question when we know we've done wrong. When we have sinned, we're, what do I do after this? And here's the thing, and I love this verse, and you can say it with me because a lot of you know this verse. 1 John 1, 9. It's on the screen. If we what? If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the beauty. That's the grace of who Jesus is. That's the great reality for us as Christ followers. That is an amazing, amazing truth. But again, please catch this. As I turn from my sin and I begin to join God in what he's doing, Here's the thing, here's the amazing story, is that I begin to be proactive in moving away from my sin, the sin that I shouldn't be doing, and now I move in a proactive way in what I should be doing. That's the amazing thing. In other words, in joining God in what he is doing, I am actually being preventative in keeping myself from sin. And again, I think we spend way too much time dealing with reactive theology when we should be actually spending more time dealing with how we as individuals, I, Craig Danielson, can be more proactive with Jesus. The more proactive we are with Jesus, the less reactive or corrective that we are going to be in sin. Because why? Because sin has no dominion over us anymore. That's what scripture says. And so we need to move in this direction. See, at the end of the day, the worst case scenario inside of how we care for ourselves on a daily basis is this. If you and I don't care for ourselves, you will be in a constant state of reaction. A constant state of reaction. But if I care for myself in what God has called me to do, and called me to be, I'm going to be proactive in that. I'm just gonna keep moving ahead. So if you think from a standpoint of this, it's not a good idea to think that a quadruple bypass surgery is a way to deal with a filled heart artery. Maybe it's time to be proactive and say, you know what? I'm going to eat right and I'm going to exercise. That's what Paul is saying. Being proactive in following Jesus, Paul says this, it is crucial. It is crucial. And he has given us all kinds of preventative methods to walk through. For example, and I think sometimes we forget this one. He has given us the Holy Spirit inside of us. And I think sometimes we downplay the Holy Spirit so much. It's like, oh man, I gotta do, do, do. Well, when we start do, doing, we just do, do ourselves. We gotta allow God to be in our life through the power of the Holy Spirit to be proactive in staying away from the things that we know he wants us to stay away from. What about this? What about this? God is alive. God is alive through the power of his Holy Spirit. And what about this? What about God's word? 
I mean, how many of us have shelved God's word for the last two years? Because we become a little cynical, we become a little negative, we become a little sour pussy, you know, we do, we do all this stuff, right, for the last two years. How many of us have just shelved God's word? I mean, let's be honest. And how many of us have shelved prayer for the last two years? Praying for the people that we can't stand. Praying for our leaders. Yes, they make stupid decisions. I understand that. But have we been praying for them to make wise decisions, to come to know Jesus personally? That's where it's at. That's what Paul is saying here. God is alive in us through the power of his Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to do. And then he's given us this. And some people have thrown this out in the last two years. And, 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 and here's the amazing thing, is that we can have online services and we can be in person. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. We can reach so many people that way. Yeah. And yet, Scripture tells us to not forsake meeting together. Hey, for those who want to be online, let's be online and let's be gracious and let's allow God to work in their lives. But those who want to be in person, here's the other thing that God has given us. He's given us in-person people to do life. Where we can do merge groups. Where we can have relationship across a coffee table to say, man, I'm praying for you, I'm cheering you on, or hey, listen, don't go down that road. It's what scripture says, iron sharpens iron, right? Shoulder to shoulder. James 5, look at it today when you have some time. James 5 talks about how we use one another to be preventative in our life as Christ followers when it comes to sin. Where we have that loyal person that we can go to and say, man, I'm struggling, but I need you to lay hands on me and pray. That's what we need to be doing. God has all these amazing, amazing practical things that he has given us. But Paul wants us to understand this, and I've heard people say this before, that grace has no strings. I've heard people say that before. God's grace is amazing, and it has no strings. Can I actually respond to that very humbly and very lovingly? Grace has all kinds of strings. Grace has all kinds of strings. And let me just say this. I believe grace is totally free. Grace is totally free. It's a gift from God. But you need to catch this. It has all kinds of strings, and we need to be thankful for those strings. For example, grace will never, ever let you get satisfied by being ruled by the master of sin. He will never, ever do that. He will constantly be working to get you see, get this, to see the greatness of who Jesus is. Aren't you thankful for that string? Absolutely. Aren't you glad that there's a string attached where he will be after you to rescue you and make you surrender and actually continue to tap you on the shoulder to surrender your life to the God of the universe? He's after you. Grace will not stop until you and I learn what God has given to us, and get this, for his fame, for his fame and for our growth. His fame and for our growth. And so when people say this statement that grace has no strings, we're going to come back to that next week in verses 15 to 23. It's got all kinds of strings, and I love those strings. Because God's fame is worth everything. God's fame is worth everything. And our life is dependent on his fame. Our life is dependent on that. I mean, what if God just said this? And I think this would just be a shameful thing for God if he made this kind of statement. Here's my grace. I hope it works out for you. Wouldn't that be a shameful thing? That's not God. God is like, here's my grace, and now partner with me through the power of the Holy Spirit to work and to will what I want in your life. It's an amazing, amazing thing. See, God is so different. He dives into our lives, and he transforms us from the inside out. 
There are strings attached. And he gives us the freest gift that we could ever get. I'm glad Peter broke a string today. I'm glad he broke a string because it shows you the grace of God. It's so good. Why? Because God is not going to quit in your life and he's not going to quit in my life. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Here's what it says. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you might get it done. He maybe will get it done. Is that what it says? Is that what it says? Turn to your neighbor and say this. He will get it done. Just say that. He will get it done. He will. In completion at the day of what? Of Jesus Christ. It shows you the grace of God does not quit. It does not quit. And not only does it create these new habits within our lives, it creates this reality of being proactive in our lives. And I was just thinking about this this past week as I was emailing one of our elders late at night and he said, oh, Craig, you should be in bed. I said, no, I'm on a roll. Like, I'm focused. I'm on a roll. I got to keep writing, all right? Paul is saying this. Don't invest any more in this world. Please invest your whole world into who? Into Jesus. That's what he's saying. Don't invest in this world. Invest the world that God has created you to be in and invest it in Jesus and being proactive. And let me just take it a step further. Verse 11. Take a look at verse 11. It says this. So you also must consider... Calculate yourselves dead to sin and please highlight, underline, or circle this word, alive to God in Jesus Christ. He, Paul is just saying here, be alive. In other words, don't float as Christ followers. Don't float, just be alive. And let me ask you a question. When you read that word, those two words, be alive, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind when you read those words, be alive, be alive to God? Here's what comes to my mind. There was a vacation that we were on when our kids were younger at Sabo Beach. And I had the privilege of saving someone from drowning. We were playing some pickleball on the shore and there were some tourists from Mexico where two guys got out too far and people started pointing and everybody was just standing there but just pointing to these two guys and one guy was making it back, the other guy sunk right to the bottom, eight feet down. And so I take off and I swim out and I go and I grab this guy off the bottom of the lake. It's what you see in movies where you bring them up and you keep them above the water. And then there was a boat that came over and they drug us both onto the boat. And back then you actually did mouth to mouth. And so I'm doing mouth to mouth while another person is doing chest compressions. Here's what it means to be alive. When that guy spit all the water out and he took his first breath, that's what being alive is about. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, when Jesus says he makes you a new creation, he breathes new life into you. You are brand spanking new. And he breathes this incredible life where you're just going to go, <gasps> and you can't believe it. It's called newness of life. Verse 4. Verse 4, check this out. Go back to, to verse 4. It says this, to walk in what? Newness of life. And here's what this means. We as Christ followers can be different. We can be different. You can be different in your school. You can be different in your family life. You can be different in your workplace. You can be different. Even when things are difficult. Even 
when we are walking through sickness, even when we are walking through two years of COVID, even when we are walking through relational difficulty, even when we don't see an answer to that prayer for the last 30 years, even when we have lost our job or gained a job, no matter what, Paul's point is this, we are followers of Christ, our lives now are Christ-centered, we are sin-destroying, and we are righteous-producing. That's what Paul is saying. We are in Christ, we are made alive in Christ by the power of his Holy Spirit, and our affections should solely be on the treasure of who Jesus is. That's what he's saying. And if there's any group of people that need to model that we are alive with Christ, it's you and me and the church. That's what we need to model. And I said this last week, that's why I believe that the younger generations are walking away from the church. Those 19 to 30-ish, that's why they're walking away from the church because they don't see a church that's alive by the Spirit of God. Paul is asking us, please, you have newness of life, be alive with Jesus Christ. And that's why I said before, let's not be those negative, negative Nancys. If you're named Nancy in here, no pun intended. But haven't you felt that in the last two years? People have gotten angry. People have gotten so negative. And it's just like, come on. We are kids of the God of the universe. It's an amazing, amazing thing. We are alive. And I get so frustrated. Can I be transparent for a minute? I get so frustrated when I see good Christ-following people starting to spout their mouth off on Facebook. I get so frustrated. But then I gotta remember, I gotta give grace and pray that God would change their attitude and change their heart. Because that doesn't help Christianity whatsoever. And we've heard this statement the last two years. Oh no! What are we going to do? Can I tell you something? God is still on his throne. And can I tell you something else? The gospel is still going forward. And matter of fact, can I tell you something else? The harder things get, the more the gospel goes forward and the more lives that are being transformed. God is transforming lives around the world. God is transforming lives here at Calvary Church. God is transforming lives here in Niagara. And that is so incredible to know that God is still on his throne. And I don't say that glibly. I don't say that to just kind of write off what's going on. I believe it. And ladies and gentlemen, as a church, we better start believing it and we better start acting like it. Because if we're not any different, then where in the world do people go? Where do people go? Nothing ever, ever will stop the God of the universe. Nothing. He is unstoppable. Nothing will stop the gospel. And here's what I believe again. If you and I don't think it's going to get worse, it may. But that's where he's given us these five practical things. The power of his Holy Spirit, the power of his word, the power of prayer, and the power of the church and the power of relationship so that we can lean into that and be alive in this newness of life that he has given us. Ladies and gentlemen, Calvary Church, let's stop floating. Let's stop floating. The other thing I've been thinking about, I think the reason why God, I think the reason why we want le certain leaders in power is because we like to float. Think about that for a second. Even in our world, the reason why we want certain leaders is because they make us float. They help us float. We don't want people to tell us what we don't want and what we don't need. We all have that in our life. Can I just say this? The God of the universe wants us to be alive with this newness of life. 
And so for those of you who have been around with us for a while in person and even online, can I just say this? Some of you have even said to this, for, to this you have said this to me personally. Greg, I want to be alive. I want to have purpose. And, and let me just say this, because we've all been there. We've tried all kinds of things to be alive. Could be addictions, could be sexual experiences, could be jobs. I'm just going to pour my life into my job, and that, that's what's going to make me alive. You maybe poured into your kids and said, man, if I pour into my kids, I'm going to be alive. And can I just humbly ask this? How is that working for you? How is that working for you? How has it worked for me in the past? See, God wants us to become alive in him. You will never be alive until you come and step over that line of faith with the God of the universe. And for those of us, it's easy to float. It's very easy to float in your Christian walk. Been there, done that. And so what Paul is asking for us to do, very simply, stop floating. Stop floating. Allow the Holy Spirit to regenerate our heart in such a way where God transforms us and we begin to be proactive in our life with our hands, with our mouth, with our thoughts, with everything, with our emotions, so that we can be a light to this world. So wherever you're at in your life, I'm along with you. We're all in this together. And so let's pray for one another that God continues to move us in the direction of himself to be alive, maybe for the very first time, or to say, I'm done floating, and I'm surrendering my life. It's that whole song that we sang, right? Come the fount of every blessing, right? Come the fount of every blessing tune my heart to sing thy grace Lord I'm prone to wander and you and I feel it and so let's count the blessings of God in our life and come back to him so that we can continue to be alive by the God of the universe let's pray Father in heaven Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much for your Holy Spirit that just continues to tap us on the shoulder. And so God, I pray for those who have been searching, who have been seeking. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be at work. God, for us who oftentimes just float, God, I pray that you would rejuvenate our heart, that you would help us to just surrender to you once again. God, your word says that you are so holy. And so God, we want that to be a part of our life. And so God, help us to be proactive by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. And so God, would you move us on to be the people that you want us to be individually, as families, and as a church. God, thank you for your presence by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I ask all this in your name. Amen. Let's stand and let's worship together. This song to me is a way maker. And I would encourage you just to be singing this. Uh, I was talking to my friends this week and we were talking about how worship isn't just a vertical experience. Just, you know, just, just me and God. That's, you know, one level of it, absolutely. But there's also a horizontal experience um, which is shared between us as believers. And so I would just encourage you as we sing these words, like you are here moving in our midst. You are here working in this place. You're touching every heart. You are healing every heart. You are turning lives around. I pray that 
we be praying through this, not just for ourselves, but for our neighbors, people who are sitting beside us as well this morning as we sing this.
I just want to say um, thanks for hanging with us today. But I want to say this. I want to make sure I bookend 11 through 14 responsibly. And verse 14 says this. When you come into this relationship with Christ and you have newness of life, here's the promise. Sin has no dominion over us. Can I say that again? Sin has no dominion over us. So Father, thank you so much for that promise. Father, I pray that you would continue to engage our hearts. And as we stand, kneel, or sit before a holy God, God, I pray that you would continue to transform us and help us to be proactive in writing this world and even writing our life. So God, as we continue in worship, may this song that we sing be just a fragrant offering to who you are and remind us about how holy you really are. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in worship. encourage you just as you sing this. You may know the words. Uh, maybe you don't. Um, but I just reflect on the lyrics. This is totally a time for you to respond just between you and God. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted rescue begin. Come find your mercy Oh, sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. All who up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too far, so lay down your heart, lay down your hope for the hopeless and all those who strayed come sit at the table come taste the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame, all who are broken, lift up your face, oh wanderer.
God, you are the one who makes a way. You are holy, and through you we receive Christ's righteousness. God, you have set us apart. You don't just call us to be passive, but you call us to be proactive, Lord. God, continue to sanctify us. Continue to pierce into our hearts, Lord. God, search us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In your name, amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.